By far, um, knee pain is a very common problem in Asia. And that, uh, this is much more common than um, that is seen in the, uh, Western, co uh, in the Western countries, such as uh, Europe and Australia. And so we think that it's likely that there is a strong genetic component to it. Common causes of this condition, how we diagnose the condition, and the, the various treatments available for uh, osteoarthritis. Now then, by far, most of these uh, conditions are because of uh, degenerative causes. But however, uh, in some cases, it is important to rule out that uh, any other causes. And one of the common causes for this condition is known as gouty arthritis of the knee. Uh, this condition, the patient may have a very high uric acid in the blood uh, or had history of uh, gout. Um, and that in these conditions, there is excessive amount of uh, uric acid in the knee resulting in uh, uh, recurrent acute inflammation uh, of the knee joint. So uh, in this uh, condition, uh, one will be able to diagnose this by doing a blood test to make sure that the uric acid is high. But by far the most common cause is because of degeneration. Now then to understand this particular condition, we need to know the anatomy of this. Now knee, the joints are covered with this cartilage, uh, and this is the kneecap. Now then, the cartilage can uh, slowly with time gets worn away, resulting in ulcer formation and uh, together with development of osteophytes or bone spur, uh, usually around the edges of the, of the bone. In addition, there may also be release of debris and uh, loose bodies that may float into the joints, resulting in uh, formation of uh, loose bodies inside that joint. Now then, what are the causes of um, uh, osteoarthritis? Well, if we look at the anatomy of the uh, cartilage, and the cartilage coats the bones here, and that, uh, if we look at the cross-section of our knee joint, you'll find that uh, the cartilage is actually quite thin. It's only about four to five millimeters in thickness. And at the same time, the actual substance is not particularly hard as well. Now, despite of these, um, the, the cartilage often for many patients will be able to last for 60, 70 years. Now then, uh, that is quite amazing compared with how often we have to change our shoes and our tires, you know, that uh, maybe, and many of these are usually quite, um, uh, uh, only last for a year or two. Mm. But of course, we know that uh, the cartilage is a living tissue. Living tissue that being that it's able to regenerate and continue to grow. Every year it will continue to grow. So in other words, the more that as we use our uh, joints, the uh, new cartilage tissues will form uh, as a result of uh, regeneration. And the regeneration is governed by the stimulation, such as exercise and the use of our joints. Now, if we look at uh, the various different stages of uh, this particular condition, uh, you see there are four, broadly divided into four uh, phases. At the beginning, you see that the cartilage is nice and shiny. Uh, with time, one would develop uh, small cracks and fissuring of the uh, cartilage tissues. By the third stage, you'll see that uh, there are uh, bone spur and uh, at the developing, or bone spur or osteophyte developing at the edges of the bone, together with the loose bodies that may be released into the joints. And the final stage, uh, you see that uh, much of the bone is being exposed and not much of cartilage left uh, inside the knee joints. Now then that's a diagrammatic representation, but if we look at uh, the uh, um, uh, what we see uh, when we put a small uh, camera inside the knee joint, this is what you see, nice and shiny cartilage, almost like ceramic, you know, it's nice and shiny and white. With the second and third stage, you see that a part of the bone is being exposed and the surface is no longer nice and shiny. And the last stage, here you see that uh, much of the bone is actually being exposed and with not much of cartilage covering the joint. Now then here on, the, on your left, you see that uh, this is a, a normal knee, uh, whereas on that of the uh, right-hand side, you see that uh, what the knee would look like uh, when it's um, uh, suffering from uh, osteoarthritis. You see that the surface is no longer very smooth, 
and you see patches of the bone being exposed. So how do we treat uh, this uh, condition? Well, prevention, of, of course, is always uh, better than cure, as we always say. Now then, um, many of the many nutritional uh, supplements uh, available, perhaps the most commonly uh, 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 researched um, uh, supplement is uh, glucosamine and chondroitins. And these do help to protect the, uh, the knee joint and uh, help the uh, symptoms for those patients with uh, early stages of osteoarthritis. Now then, um, despite of this, many of the patients may suffer from acute attack of uh, osteoarthritis. Now how the patient would present would be that uh, they can either present with gradual onset of uh, gradual ache, key feeling to the knees, especially with squatting and with climbing of stairs. Now then there are some patients that may present with an acute attack of uh, knee pain, and you see that uh, the knee becomes suddenly very warm, very swollen, and uh, in some cases one may need to remove the fluid from the joint in order to improve the, um, the uh, symptoms. And in addition to taking anti-inflammatory medicine and perhaps uh, resting of the knee during the acute phase, um, the uh, one of the treatments that are uh, quite uh, effective for patients with uh, early stages of osteoarthritis is to give an injection of a lubricant into the knee joint. Now, then, this involves in uh, um, in giving the uh, the injection in the office settings and that. Um, with this, it will help to not only to reduce the friction um, uh, as a result of the uh, lubricants inside the knee joint, but it will also help to reduce the inflammation um, inside the knee joint as well. The lubricants will penetrate into the uh, cartilage and it will make the uh, uh, knee to last longer. Now, the, this uh, procedure is done in the office setting. Um, we would uh, clean the skin, and then after that, then a needle is then placed uh, into the joint, and the lubricant is then injected into the um, into the joint. It is done in the uh, office uh, setting, and that uh, immediately after the uh, injection, the patient is able to walk uh, without um, too much of uh, of um, pain. Now then, for uh, patients with moderate uh, osteoarthritis, then uh, particularly those patients with a lot of loose bodies uh, inside the knee joints, then uh, it may be uh, useful to uh, proceed on to uh, carry out a, a procedure known as an arthroscopic washout. Now what this does is that uh, one would uh, introduce the camera into the knee joints, and with this we will be able to drain all the inflammatory fluid out and at the same time to remove the uh, loose bodies uh, inside the knee. Now then for those patients with very bad osteoarthritis, so in other words those patients with uh, stage 4 where much of the cartilage is actually being exposed and that uh, the um, with not much of the cartilage cover, then um, um, if one is looking for a permanent solution to this problem then perhaps total knee replacement will be the treatment of choice. Because with uh, this operation, um, one would, it is a surface replacement uh, um, operation where one would uh, replace the surface of the joint with um, uh, artificial materials. And with this, one would be able to uh, uh, be pain-free and that's uh, able to bend and squat much more freely, and it certainly has uh, quite a long-lasting effect in that uh, many of these patients will uh, be uh, will last for uh, up to 15 to 20 years. So this is quite a, a good treatment for those patients with uh, severe osteoarthritis. And the analogy that one can give for this would be equivalent to, let's say, for instance, um, making a crown for your uh, for a badly um, decayed uh, tooth. 